The Ford Ranger is undoubtedly a pretty impressive pickup truck. Its large truck bed, solid interior space, and above all else, a choice of incredibly capable V6 engines make it a real sight to behold in this day and age. However, all is not milk and honey, as despite the many merits the Ford Ranger might provide at first glance, there's a lot wrong with it. So let's not waste any time and look at the five reasons why you should avoid the Ford Ranger. Number 5. Reliability Issues One of the biggest issues with the Ford Ranger is by far its reliability issues. Ford has, undoubtedly, become quite unreliable as a brand in the past few years, and most of their vehicles have all been met with quite a bit of backlash in this department. The Ford Ranger is no exception to this rule, as both the all-new model as well as the recently departed Ranger have been known to fail, and quite frequently so. Now, we have to be honest, these issues weren't catastrophic. However, they did bring a very nauseating and irritating note to the Ranger ownership to many buyers. Starting with the previous generation, the Ranger's powertrains were neither very reliable nor were they exceptionally powerful. You were stuck with a single engine, which is the well-known 2.3-liter EcoBoost. Now, this is a tried and tested unit. However, with its 270 horsepower, it left a lot to be desired, and its inline four layout neutered it of any serious towing capabilities. The current generation has a 2.7 EcoBoost V6 on offer as well as a 3.0 twin-turbo Raptor version being available for purchase. However, neither of the two engines is particularly reliable. The 2.7, which is the best all-rounder engine on the market today, had a lot of smaller issues, some of which required full-on recalls. The 2.3 is still available, and it is, as usual, a pretty good powertrain, but it is also no less limited than with the old Ranger. Both the previous and the current generation have also been known for transmission issues. The 10-speed automatic has been widely regarded as a very indecisive unit, resulting in a very sluggish ride that interferes with both the truck's smoothness and comfort, as well as its performance. In addition, this gearbox isn't particularly reliable. Sure, it's not the worst gearbox in the world, but it does need to be babied a bit, which isn't the best look for a rough and tough pickup truck. Number 4. A Horrible Interior Everybody loves a good interior, especially on a vehicle such as this. Ergonomics, quality, fitment, and practicality are all a welcome entry when it comes to pickup trucks, as most owners tend to spend quite a lot of hours and miles with them. However, we're sad to inform you that the Ranger suffers quite a bit compared to its rivals in this segment, as it has a terrible interior. The technology used on the Ranger has been revered as one of the worst in its class, and the general quality, as well as the fitment and thought given to the inside of the truck, leaves a lot to be desired. Not to mention that ergonomics are a literal nightmare fuel, as the interior is filled with all kinds of buttons that are not needed. Seriously, why not just leave a few essential buttons and dials, while moving those that are rarely used to a larger touchscreen? After all, this is what the majority of the Ranger's competition has already done. Well, thank God Ford came to their senses in this regard. As of 2023, with the introduction of the new model, almost every complaint has been fixed. Gone is that minuscule and outdated touchscreen, and in its wake is now a vertical infotainment screen that is far more responsive and allows the Ranger to fit in much better with its older brother, the F-150. In addition, the dashboard quality has increased drastically. There are a lot of storage spaces throughout the cabin, and everything just feels much better in terms of design and utility. Sure, it's not the best truck in its segment in this regard, even with the revisions mentioned, but it is pretty good. However, as good as it is, there is a more crucial and fundamental issue with it. Number 3. A Very Dated Platform You see, Despite being introduced to the U.S. in 2019, the Ford Ranger has been sitting on a platform that went on sale back in 2011. The Ranger, before it was introduced to the U.S., 
was sold practically worldwide for eight years. Can you imagine Ford not offering a pickup truck in the US while offering it everywhere else? Anyhow, this senior age of the Ranger is very evident in the previous generation as it drags with it all of the typical problems that an early 2010s truck had, that being quality, comfort, and capability. The usual suspects. Starting with the suspension, the Ranger was a pretty harsh truck to be driven around in as its suspension system was pretty rudimentary. The rear was fitted exclusively with leaf springs, which, albeit better for towing, significantly reduced on-road composure as well as softness. In addition, the front suspension is also nothing to write home about. It's a double wishbone setup. However, the front has been stiffened up to compensate for the rear suspension and allow the truck to be at least somewhat capable on-road. Now, the new Ranger tries to fix these issues, and it achieves pretty good results, apart from the comfort part, that is. You see, it is a more comfortable vehicle than its predecessor, however, only marginally so, as it also sits on the same platform as the old Ranger, just heavily modified. And as we know, a leopard can't change its spots, as hard as it tries. Think of the new Ford Ranger as very good plastic surgery. You can change a lot of stuff for the better. However, the skeleton remains the same and you need to find a workaround for its flaws. On the other hand, with its beating heart being upgraded to twin turbo V6, the towing capacity as well as the overall capability has been improved quite a bit. In addition, the interior quality and layout are, as we've already established, much better and that already makes it worth it for us. And as much as we'd love to see it be a bit more comfortable, we'd choose its incredible towing capacity over added comfort any time of the day. It's not like it's unbearable, it's just mediocre, that's all. It's certainly better than the Chevy Colorado. However, there is a segment where it lags behind its entire competition significantly, and that is number two, a generic design. Nobody is buying a pickup truck for their looks, but it's nice to have a vehicle that you'd love to take a glance at once you park it. Take, for example, the new Toyota Tacoma or the Colorado. Both of these vehicles are very striking to look at. They feel very contemporary with their athletic bodies and very sharp and well-proportioned panels. They look nothing like their predecessors. And now take a look at the Ford Ranger. It looks identical to the previous generation. Seriously, everything but the front end looks virtually the same. Now sure, this is because they share a platform, after all. However, Ford shouldn't have done such a safe and lazy job with the exterior, in our opinion. As much as it isn't the deciding factor in terms of practicality, it isn't a good look to give out all that money and drive around in the most generic of trucks available to purchase. Seriously, even the underdog of this segment, the Nissan Frontier, looks better than the Ranger. And the Frontier is as traditional looking as it gets nowadays. But we've saved the biggest issue for last. Number one, the Ranger's price is a bit too steep. Let's be honest here, the Ranger is way too expensive for what it is. As of now, the Ford Ranger starts at around $3,000 more on average compared to its rivals, save for the GMC Canyon and the Jeep Gladiator, which is a serious price difference. This is especially true because you get very little with the entry-level Ranger compared to its rivals. It comes with an inline four, a very bare-bones interior and exterior, and overall doesn't seem to offer anything of significance compared to the Colorado or the Tacoma. Not to mention that the new Nissan Frontier schools it, as its entry-level trim is both better equipped and less expensive than the Ranger. Now sure, as soon as you start adding stuff to it, the Ranger becomes a much better proposition, as the likes of the Colorado start rivaling it in terms of pricing while underperforming it in terms of equipment. However, even then, the Tacoma presents itself as the better value, as the TRD Pro and even the two base model hybrids, the TRD Pro and the TRD Off-Road, make the Ranger look a bit redundant. Finally, its entry-level models are dwarfed by Ford's own Maverick, 
which costs a third of the price less. And apart from a bit of bed space and towing, offers much more value for money. All in all, Ford should give more thought to their Ranger, as it has the potential to become the king of the segment. But what good is potential if not utilized properly?